Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I hope you're all doing well in the middle of this crazy time, this self-quarantine time, this stay-at-home time. I'm doing good. We have many things to talk about this week, including a reading from Peter Straub's The Throat. We're going to be getting into what you've been up to, what I've been up to, uh, just how you've been keeping ourselves, how we've been keeping ourselves busy during all this weirdness. Uh, we're going to get into some Nomad products. It is a company that I had heard good things about and I had requested some of their products for review. I don't do that very often, but occasionally I do, and I have some of those products I'd like to show you really quick. Um, not the review, I'm just going to show you the boxes that they came in. I'm still enjoying a little bit of Robert McConnell Folded Flake. We have a different kind of video coming out on Wednesday, though, and I'm going to tease that a little bit. And then we need to get to your questions on hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, because there are quite a few this week, and I want to have time to get through them. But first, as per usual, we will do a reading from Peter Straub's The Throat. We still have our good friend, actually our good friend has purchased his illicit substances and now he is back partying with the members of his unit. <clears throat> and we will continue. I drew in a mouthful of harsh perfumed smoke and Scoot sang, Hooray and hallelujah, you had it coming to you. Goody for her, goody, goody for me. I hope you're satisfied, you rascal you. Is that a song that I should know? Does that sound familiar to anybody? Let me know in the comments below. Holding the smoke as De Maestro inhaled and passed the long cigarette to Ratman, I scooped ice cubes into a plastic glass. De Maestro winked at me, and Ratman took two deep drags before passing the cigarette to Scoot. I poured whiskey over the ice and walked away from the table. Hooray and hallelujah, Scoot rasped, holding the smoke in his lungs. My knees felt oddly numb, almost rubbery. Something in the center of my body felt warm, probably the Jack Daniels. Picklock lit up the second cigarette and came around to me by the time I had taken a couple sips of my drink. I sat down with my back against the wall. Goody goody for it. Goody goody for S. Goody goody for war. Goody goody for whores. We ought to have music, Ratman said. We have Scoot, said De Maestro. Then the world abruptly went away and I was alone in a black void. A laughing void lay on either side of me, a world without time or space or meaning. For a moment, I was back in the shed, and Scoot was saying, Damn right. Then I was not in the shed with the body squad and the five units, but in a familiar world full of noise and color. I saw the peeling paint on the side of the Idle Hour Tavern. A neon beer sign glowed in the window. The paint had been white, had once been white, but the decay of things was as beautiful as their birth. Elm leaves heaped up in the gutter brown and red, and through them cool water sluiced toward the drain. Experience itself was sacred. Details were sacred. I was a new person in a world just being made. Hmm, interesting. More from that next week. I would like to thank once again Peter Straub, who is an award-winning author and a viewer of the Stuff and Things channel and a Patreon supporter for allowing us to read his book, The Throat, every week. Things in the world don't seem to have changed much since the last time we spoke, so I'm assuming most of you are still sequestered at home. A lot of you gave me some really good comments about the things that you're doing to keep yourselves busy during all this nonsense. <clears throat> I've been doing similar things, uh, just kind of pursuing hobbies, some hobbies that I haven't had a chance to pursue because of time, I now have a bit more time for. But it still amazes me how I'm able to fill every day, and it's not as though I'm just sitting around with huge blocks of time in which I have nothing to do. I don't know why that is, maybe that's just the kind of person I am, but it seems like there's always something to do every single day. One way my fiance and I have been keeping busy is playing a lot of the Nintendo Switch game Animal Crossing New Horizons, a game that is sweeping certain segments of the population recently. Um, it's a very hard game to describe if you've never played it, but it's sort of a life sim. You are building up this island from nothing into a bustling little village. You have anthropomorphic animal companions. It's all very strange. Um, I spend much of my time just trying to make money to pay off the mortgage of my house. 
But anyway, for some reason it's very compelling and my fiance, who doesn't really play games that much at all, has been very, very into it as well. So it's been fun to kind of share the progress with that. I don't know if any of you are playing it out there. Let me know if you are. That's one of the things I've been doing. <clears throat> Another thing, as I kind of mentioned last week, was getting back into guitar playing a bit. I had let myself or my skills rust quite often or quite completely. Um, hadn't really touched a guitar much at all in the last few years. And I posted a video a couple weeks ago of me sort of cleaning, restringing, getting back in touch with my Rickenbacker. I know, how many times do I have to say this? Every time I say Rickenbacker, somebody corrects me. But I also usually in the same video tell people that I know it is Rickenbacker and then people still correct me. Um, I know it's Rickenbacker. I just automatically say Rickenbacker. I can't help it. I know intellectually what the actual name is, but I can't always make myself say it. So let's just put that to bed for now. Um, but there is something else that I recently acquired that I have been very, very excited about. We're going to tease that in a little bit when we talk about upcom upcoming videos. Aside from that, uh, just working on videos, doing chores around the house. Uh, I don't know. There's always something to do. What are you guys doing? I think every week it's kind of cool to check in and just sort of talk about hobbies that we've been indulging in. Maybe if you guys have any recommendations for cool documentaries or books or films or things like that for people to check out, put them in the comments below. Thank you. All right. I mentioned that there is a company out there called Nomad. And they have some pretty cool leather products, and not just leather products, actually, as you will see. And I had seen some of their things, and originally I reached out to them because you may remember weeks, months, a year ago, I don't even know now, what does time mean, uh, that I had gotten these Moment iPhone lenses, and I wanted to use them on my new phone, and I was trying to get a case from Moment that you can use to mount the lenses to your phone. The case was very late, and then when it came, I didn't like it. So I realized that Nomad made cases uh, that would mount these Moment lenses, and so I reached out to them saying, said, hey, I'd like to try those. They said, cool, uh, wires got crossed, the thing never, the original shipment never got to me. There was all sorts of delay, the ridiculous health crisis that's going on probably didn't help. But I finally got the stuff in from Nomad, the only issue is that the case they sent me is not the Moment lens case. What a, you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, it's actually just their normal iPhone 11 Pro case. It does look very cool though. I wanna show you this really quick. We're gonna do full reviews on all these things eventually, or maybe just like a, a full review in a video in which I talk about all these products at once instead of doing individual videos. They also sent me a cool little iPhone AirPod case in leather, and then a base stand, base station stand wireless charger. So let's yank these things out of the boxes and see what they look like. The packaging is quite nice, I have to say. Uh, what am I having trouble with here? Uh, how do I open this? It looks like it should just shove out, but maybe that is not the case. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look, oh, that's cool magnetically sealed box here. Let's pop that open again. And there we go. You have your iPhone case right there. I like this because it's similar to the Apple iPhone cases, the leather cases they make, except it seems a little bit more durable. It actually has rubber around the corners and there's sort of a suede-like material inside and then rubber on the inside as well. So it seems a little bit more durable and a little bit more protective but then you still have that really cool leather. And I love how the leather will age over time. In fact, I think they even show, yeah, they have a picture here where it shows the case when it's brand new and then after day 100. I don't know if that shows up very well on the camera, but I'm looking forward to putting this through its paces. We also have the AirPod case. Now these don't open the same way, do they? Where are we going here? Here we go. Yeah. Watch Brad try to open product packaging. Slide this out. Oh, I don't know what that is. Okay, there you go. So you have, this fits 
I hope the original AirPods, I think it does, because that's the kind of AirPods that I have. And so you have this leather cover over, again, like a rubberized kind of plastic. Nice and secure, that's very cool. It looks like they even have a little cutout, I don't know if you'll be able to make that out, where the LED shows up on the AirPods case when you're charging and stuff. So we'll be checking that out as well. And then finally, we have this base station stand. This one actually has some tape on it. Damn nation, I don't have a knife on me right now. We're gonna have to improvise. The check tool is good for everything. All right, let's pop this thing open. So this is for phones and or AirPod cases that have wireless charging capability. Ooh, this is really nice. It feels like aluminum, anodized aluminum. You have your charging stand like this. You can put your phone horizontally or vertically. Plugs in the back. Um, this is really cool. And then a nice leather pad there. You also get a, ah, very nice fabric wrapped cord and then the power brick i'm assuming here <sighs> can't get it out yeah power brick plugs into the wall american style there you go so we're going to be checking all of these products out uh, we will hopefully have a review up soonish i know that we also have the review of robert mcconnell folded flake coming up and then there's something else god this packaging is really nice by the way very dense foam inside, keeps everything nice and sharp, nice and sharp, nice and safe. Um, but we have quite a few videos coming up. I want to try to get to these soon because, you know, I told them I was going to do a video on this a long time ago. And then there was the whole issue with the products not coming and all that stuff. But hopefully soon we will do a review of these Nomad products and you will be able to check them out. I am going to start using them right away. So I'll have, you know, some experience to base the review on. But I just wanted to keep you guys up to date on all that good stuff. Um, yeah, this case looks really nice. In fact, I said I was going to start using it. Ugh. I am taking off my Spec, I think is the brand. Yeah, Spec case. I don't know exactly what model this is for the iPhone 11 Pro. And we are throwing in, or throwing the phone in, the Nomad case. There you go. Quite nice, fits very well, feels more durable, a little bit more substantial than the Apple leather case. The Apple case is leather all the way around the sides. And this one has this rubberized kind of raised edge, which I like. I actually feel a little bit more secure. I wouldn't really trust the Apple case with a drop on a phone like this, but this one, maybe. All right, cool. So stay tuned for those Nomad reviews coming up soon. All right. We mentioned Robert McConnell folded flake. I have a pipe loaded with some right now. Might as well light it up. Mm-hmm. I've been enjoying this. And of course, everyone pointed out to me and I remembered at the time when I, well, not at the time, but after I had recorded the video of the first impressions for Robert McConnell folded flake, I was saying, oh, I'd never actually reviewed a Robert McConnell blend. I had, it was their Majesty Elizabethan, their, their knockoff Elizabethan mixture that I did not like. Um, but this I'm actually enjoying quite a bit. And I've got maybe about half the tin left. So I'm still working on this review. This will be coming up soon. Not necessarily this coming week. Hold on, I've got some debris I need to take care of. Be right back. There we go. Um, not necessarily next week because as I mentioned at the top of the video, something arrived, I'm looking at it right now, with love and longing. Um, I've been taking it with me everywhere, even to the Stuff and Think Studios. Uh, it's something I have wanted for, I think six years? Well, in concept, I've wanted it for a lot longer, but I've wanted this exact thing for six years. I was saving up money to get it for a long time. The car accident that happened about a year and a half ago, which many of you will remember, right before that happened, I had had the sort of frivolous money saved up to get this thing. 
And then the car accident happened and that money had to be used to get a, to get a new car basically. And I couldn't justify spending it on something frivolous. And now, even though things are a little unsettled with being furloughed from work and all that stuff, um, I got, I, I found this thing at a price that I couldn't believe and for a deal that I couldn't believe as far as like 0% financing. And I just, I had to do it because I've wanted it for so long. I'm gonna give you a little tease as to what it is and then you can watch the video Wednesday. I recorded a video of receiving this thing, unboxing this thing. Hold on. All right, here's the tease. There you go. That's all you're gonna get until Wednesday. Uh, suffice to say, I am very excited and I can't wait for you guys to share in that excitement on Wednesday. But now, as I mentioned, we need to get to these questions. I've already gone almost 20 minutes and there are quite a few hashtag Ask Stuff and Things questions. Remember, if you have a question for me that you would like answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. And I will do my best to answer you at the nearest possible uh, time, the soonest possible time. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can ask me questions there as well. First, via Patreon from Steve Oster, or Oster, sorry Steve. Steve says, hey Bradley, how about a video on fine tuning your smoking technique? I ask because I'm still fiddling with mine way more than I'd like, especially at the end of the bowl. I find there's still plenty of dry, unburned tea at the bottom of the bowl, about the last one third, that I have to light repeatedly. There is tinder dry, black, charcoal looking tea that blossoms into clouds of smoke with a fresh light but goes out quickly despite frequent puffing. It's worrisome, and I suppose there's also a danger of damaging the bowl and or draft hole. I have my least troublesome smokes packing the pipe using the Frank method. When I get it right, everything's a pleasure until the last one third. Any advice would be welcome. This is an interesting question because there are so many things that could go into this, and it's hard to know or to zero in on exactly what it would be without seeing kind of your entire technique, and I don't know if you are a newcomer to the hobby or if you've had years of experience, I do have to say the pipe usually makes a big difference. A good pipe will just perform better in general, but also there are some mechanical things that may be having an effect, how densely you're packing it, um, how wet or dry the actual blend is that you're putting in the pipe. So. It's hard for me to say without knowing a little bit more information, but I would say in general, if the Frank method is working well for you, then it probably is, or if you get a, a better result with one method of packing over another, then it probably does have more to do with mechanics than it does to does with your pipe itself. So I would just tweak things and experiment with things, um, how densely you're packing it, how fully you're packing it, all those things, and eventually you should probably settle into a really satisfying situation. Next, from Twitter and Tobias Johansson. I think that's how I should pronounce that properly. Uh, Tobias says, <clears throat> Now that you've had a Peterson lighter a few years, have you had any issues with it? Still like it? Early in SAT life, you talked about how much you like Peterson pipes and your Savinelli army mount. Do you still? Um, I haven't talked about the Peterson lighter for a while because I have not found it since I moved. Um, so I need to do that. I know it's in a box somewhere and I've unpacked most things, but I will grab that eventually. I still use it when I'm at home for the most part, but I don't take it with me to the SAT studios most of the time. Um, and then Peterson pipes. Yeah, I still actually I just re rotated a Peterson into my kind of pipe starting lineup. I'm using my um, Sterling Silver Spigot pipe, that really cool uh, kind of rusticated billiard Sterling Silver Peterson that I had. Um, I don't currently have any system pipes in my rotation right now, but that could change. I've just, I had gotten so many new pipes recently and so many really, really nice pipes that I was just sort of indulging uh, my fancy by smoking those. But yeah, I still enjoy Peterson a lot. Next from J Ralph at J Ralph 89. What are your thoughts on this whole COVID blah, blah? Okay, we're getting to da dangerous territory here. I think it is being blown way out of proportion. 
nine of 10 stories on the news are, are about or related to this pandemic. Seems more like a terrifying Bigfoot story, or am I just, just being paranoid? Thinking face face with monocle shushing face. Hashtag ask stuff and things. Um, I, d I don't know. I, I was talking about this kind of early on. I don't want to get into it too much, first of all, because people freak out whenever you mention anything about it or if you question anything about it. And also, there's not much point right now in discussing it until things kind of settle down and we have a little hindsight. I have my own opinion on the way things are going, on the way governments are reacting, and the way the media is reporting on it. Um, and maybe we'll get into that at a later date. For now, just stay safe, stay at home, hashtag. Next, from Neville Smith at TCTI. Did you move house far from your old place? I note there is still train noise in the guitar video, or do you hear it all over Bellingham? Uh, hashtag ask stuff and things. Neville, uh, in the guitar video, I was at home. Yeah, okay, yeah. So this place, Stuff and Things Studios, is on the same street as my old, uh, as my old apartment is, or was. My new place is about a mile away from here or so. So you can still hear the train. It's not anywhere nearly as loud as it is here or at my old apartment. If you are in Bellingham, anywhere near the downtown or central business district, you will hear the train, but not everywhere. I mean, if you're in the suburbs or on the outskirts, you won't hear it. Next, from Tyler at Tyler Brubaker 20. Hey Bradley, hope all is well. My question is, with the new apartment and living space, do you have any new areas to enjoy your pipe? Porch, patio, yard, etc.? Hashtag ask stuff and things. Uh, I have not enjoyed one out of doors in the new place. I'm not sure exactly how that would go over. There is kind of a yard slash picnic-y area out there. I'm sure I could go out there if I wanted to. Typically, it is in my vehicle. Um, again, I'm not really working right now, so I don't have as much opportunity. Usually that would be kind of the morning rituals to make my coffee, get in the vehicle, enjoy a pipe, and then head to work, and then having it during lunch breaks and stuff like that. Uh, I do have it when I'm at Stuff and Things Studios, and uh, yeah, haven't really, maybe as the temperature gets warmer and everything into summer, I might indulge in the yard activities around here. I have walked around and gone to some of the local parks and stuff, but there you go. Next, from Kyle Whitmore at Kyle Whitmore 7. My good friend, how are your teddy bears? Uh, that is a euphemism for a firearm. I finally got my first one with tax money. With the stimulus? Good job. Uh, his name is Walter, and he is a PPQ subcompact teddy. I'm assuming he means a Walter PPQ. Could you do a video on handheld teddy cleaning techniques and preferred products? Haven't I done a video on that? Hold on. YouTube Studio, on my phone. This is real time, gang. I thought for sure that I had done a cleaning video. Uh, I did one on a 1911, for sure. I thought I had done one on a Glock as well. Let me see. Okay, maybe I didn't do a gun, uh, a cleaning video on a Glock, but I definitely did on a 1911, so you can look that up. Um, I just use normal stuff. I use Ballistol a lot. I like Ballistol. And then, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have like a specific product that I'm married to, but I do like Ballistol quite a bit. Next, or last, I think, Eric Furman has two questions, at Eric Furman. On the 4-12-20 episode of Sunday Stuff and Things, you were smoking a Dunhill Billiard, but what shape number was it? Um, that was, I believe, the 1962 Shell Briar Billiard. Back then, they didn't have the same numbering conventions that they have now or that they've had in the recent decades. That one was just an LB, I think. So it's a big fat billiard. It didn't have the same shape number. And in fact, the nomenclature on that was so worn that it was hard to tell exactly what it was. Um, but I think an LB, now they have, now their name uh, numbering convention is usually they have a group size um, for the bowl first. So like a 4,000, what would it be? A 424, 4,003. 
uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember the Dunhill naming conventions, but like there's kind of a standard billiard shape and then there will be something in there for whether or not it has a, a tapered stem or a saddle bit, all that good stuff. But that one is old enough that it had a different naming convention. So I think if you just look up Dunhill Billiard LB, you'll probably find the same shape, but that was in the 60s and 50s and such. Next, he says, uh, what is the funkiest, most unusual pipe blend you have ever had? Have you ever tried anything with deer tongue in it? Um, I still have not tried anything with deer tongue, I don't think. Unless I've had a sample of something. I know I haven't had an entire tin. And the weirdest blend I've had thus far... I don't know, I mean, there have been some crazy ones that... There, there was one, uh, La Bermouge, Bermouse. What was it called? It was a French uh, blend that was, it was a burley that basically tasted a lot like a cigar. That was an interesting one. Um, maybe for something a little more mainstream, the Gawith 1792 flake is weird. It has Tonquin bean in it, and I, I did not like it. It bit me like crazy, and the aftertaste from the Tonquin bean was just very strange. Uh, not like anything you'll, most, you'll ever really have in most other blends. Um, but yeah, that's about all I can think of right now. I'm going to have to get some deer tongue and see what that's like. Uh, that is an herb, by the way. We're not talking about actual deer tongue at all. All right, gang, I think that does it. This has been a very long episode. We need to wrap it up. But before we do, it's time for the very best part of the episode, and that is where we thank you, our Patreon supporters. Those who support the channels at $25 or more a month are entitled to a special shout-out every week on the Sunday Stuff and Things. Good people like Glenn, Derek, Cody Striegler, Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Ryan McFadden, Corbin Borbin, Adam Loveless, MD of the North, Ryan Stoffer, and AJ Hogue. And of course, we cannot forget the crazy wild maniacs who support the channels at $100 or more a month, or $100 a month, and who are entitled to a Skype conversation with me. People like Peter Straub, Bob McGee, and Michael Pilcher. Thank you all so much for your support. You are what makes this show go. And thank you all for watching, for viewing, for leaving comments, for asking questions on Twitter at hashtag AskStuffAndThings. Until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.